Yes, guys, so we are back again for another one, another reaction on this year, BR, BPTV. This is actually the very first out of two reactions I'll be jumping on this year, YouTube platform. The next one will be on the Mystelix reaction, guys, so you can definitely tune in for that vibrations a bit later on. That link will be in the first comment in the comment box below, guys. But welcome to each and every one of you guys who tuned in to another vibrations. Big up on yourself for definitely tuning by, to, tuning in, brothers and sisters, and seeing what your boy has to see. And, of course, I want to see what you guys have to see and on this year reaction vibrations as well leave your thoughts in the comment box below guys and with that said guys don't forget to hit that like button brothers and sisters smash that like button i would appreciate that right there and there and with that said guys let us get into the vibrations for today right there now brothers and sisters what you've seen is a blank screen but of course this is none other than mr gabriel christian and of course he's embarking on the journey for which there is a book on dr and uh, irving andres uh, on black revolutionary rosie Douglas brothers and sisters and of course I think we want to get some sentiment in what exactly that means and how it pertains to that of which is happening to Dominica today and of course I believe there's a meet that's going to be happening on Friday with Dr. Irvin Andre I think he's in Dominica right now but we're going to get a little insight on that vibrations from none other than Mr. Gabriel Christian right here so let's take a listen a blessed evening everyone yes sir to all those gathered at the what we call extra rural department of the University of the West Indies. Now it's called Open Campus. But in the days when Irvin and I attended under the illustrious, now deceased, K. Polydor, it was the extramural department. So to all of you, a blessed evening, a blessed good evening, and to high officials and those not too high, and to the working classes and to those who are interested in literature, in history, and the best interests of our country, I bid you welcome. So it seems like the meeting is going to be at the UE campus, so you guys can definitely check that vibration out right there. Uh, let's continue. Well, my name is Gabriel Christian, and I've been associated with the, the Right Honorable Justice Irvin Andre for many years. Time takes me back to 1975-76, where I'm at the Dominica Grammar School, somewhere in second, third form, and I'm at the research section. And he is an upperclassman. In those days, there was not much of an interaction between upperclassmen and lower class. And there were very <laughs> few ladies at the grammar school then, and those in the lower form. And Irving, Judge Andre was ahead of me. And we would close the library. We would stay in the library until closing time on a Saturday afternoon. So this book, which has been launched this evening, The, the Mantle of, of Struggle. Oh, The Mantle of Struggle, okay. A biography, biography of Black of... Revolutionary Ruzi Douglas by Irvin Andre has its genesis in studied effort and voluntary service. The studied effort that I saw Irving engage in was an unquenchable, unquenchable, unquenchable thirst for knowledge. He had this passion and desire for knowledge. And I was fortunate in that time to have been friends with him. And so when in 1976, Rusey Douglas was deported from Canada hmm. for his role in the 1969 Revolution. George William University uprising. I remember watching that video. We, that was something else, you guys. That was truly something else. Stand off against racist individuals, man. Crazy. And formed the Popular Independence Committee to support the then Liberal Party of Patrick John in the march towards political independence, which was not quite popular for a lot of reasons because of the mistakes that had been made by Patrick, Patrick John. John during the Dread Act and the Dread War and the passing of the, you know, the notorious uh, prohibited societies, prohibited and unlawful societies act, a.k.a. the Dread Act, meant a lot of young people in the urban center of Rosa were not very fond of the government because a lot mm. of young people were, had been brutalized, their dreadlocks had been cut, and this year is 50 years and formed the Popular Independence Committee to support the then Liberal Party of Patrick John in the march towards had been made by Patrick John during the Dread Act and the Dread War and the passing of the, no, the notorious uh, prohibited societies, prohibited and unlawful societies act, a.k.a. the Dread Act, hmm. meant a lot of young people in the urban center of Rosa were not very fond of the government. A lot of young people were, had been brutalized, their dreadlocks had been cut, and this year is 50 years since that infamous act was passed. Hmm. So when Uzi Douglas came, he brought wind to the sails of the Labour Party, which was floundering among the youth population, which inexorably, because again of mistakes, led to 1979 and the uh, 
change of government then. But when Rusi came back, his brother Michael Douglas was in government. And he took the position that we should support the government on independence. And he formed the Popular Independence Committee. And I joined the committee and became the secretary because I had a pension for being a dearest. I always took notes. And so Rusi says, Let's get, let Gable be the secretary because he always is writing. And <laughs> I recruited Irving to the cadre. And we were the most dynamic, youth-led, student-led entity of the Popular Independence Committee in Roseau. And we'd have debates. We'd have panel discussions at the parish hall, at the judge hall, at the schools. Brothers and sisters, as he's talking about debate, brothers and sisters, this is something that I notice has dwindled, especially in the political arena. When it comes down to debates, brothers and sisters, why, why aren't there debates anymore? Why, why doesn't Skerritt versus Lennox or Skerritt versus um, Thompson, Fountain, why, why doesn't this happen? If you're doing so well for the economy, why not debate and then show your prowess? Hey, this is what I've done and the people are benefiting in that regard. Why, why, why isn't there a debate? Back then, used to have debates. I remember seeing Roosevelt doctors debating with a set of individuals. Why, 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 why? I even saw Pierre Charles debating as well. I think it was on mapping, mapping news that was carried it, and, and you know, that's way back in the day. Way, way back in the day, as a little youth, I remember seeing them folks debating. Why has debating disappeared? Hmm. I guess that's what the people want. And at the same time, I was the president of the Federation of Students, which grouped the students in Roseau and the one secondary school outside Roseau, uh, Portsmouth Secondary School, where we had people like Debbie Douglas, Ali Lawrence, Angus Olad, Ali Lawrence, Romanus, uh, um, uh, 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 Romanus, his name will get will get to, will get to me uh, will get to me uh, in a while. Steve John and, and people like that. But I want to say before I talk about what animated uh, Irving and what made him a leader then of studied, studied effort and voluntary service, because when we put out, for instance, the magazine uh, of uh, cadre number one, which is what we call ourselves on the inside and on the outside, we call ourselves the Cicero Youth Movement. Hmm. We call it Vanguard, the voice of the working people. Vanguard. Although in those days, we were not working people. We were teenagers at our parents' homes. We have been, of course, living with his parents in Goodwill. And I lived with my parents in Lower Goodwill. So we were So the teenagers back then wanted to do something. They were heavily involved in the community. Well, he was one of them on the Roosevelt Douglas. He was one of the individuals who was, you know, and of course he himself recruited other young people and of course even had their own association going there. The question is, what exactly is happening with the youth in Dominica? Boy, boy. Oh my god. We're working people, we're students. But before I go into that any further, I want to give thanks to the uh, university centers, uh, director, Ms. Joseph, for always being a friend of the arts and to opening the doors of the university center to uh, Pont Cassie Press, and myself, Ruben, and others who are desirous of exposing the best of all people through literature, history, and the like. I want to give thanks to our parents. Irving's parents did a fantastic job with himself and his brothers. Big up the parents, big up everybody, brothers and sisters. We're trying to get into it. Kathy, and as successful a writer as he is. Kathy has been uh, the guiding light in many respects uh, in helping Irving uh, be so uh, uh, productive in, in authoring more than 20 books but on Dominican history, literature, biography, and the like. I want to give thanks to our teachers. Several thanks to everybody. Thanks to everybody. This is a period, reaction. We don't have food teachers. So too were our doctors and our nurses at the then Princess Margaret Hospital, where people would live from other islands on occasion and come to Dominica. I've told you guys this before. I met somebody in Le Seines who came to Dominica to do operations donkey years ago. I couldn't believe it. And then the man started telling me all those different things. You know, his family used to go to Dominica for them to shop. And I've heard a number of persons saying the same thing as well. I met people in Guadeloupe, said so they used to come to Dominica. Dominica back in the day was the eat spot, they would say. Have medical procedures. So God bless them because of that. We had a solid education system in Dominica and we had a solid 
healthcare system in Dominica that uh, was the uh, envy of some of our name of many of our neighbors. Yep. We give thanks for that kind of enabling environment because without good health, without good education, there would no be there'd be no Ovin Andre. True. Be no so good health fostered better education. But Dominicans understand what it what is required for us to succeed as a nation. The book Urban will discuss in detail. You will ask questions, and I'm sure you'll buy copies of it. But I believe it's important to understand for those of us who are overseas who love our country, like Urban has been a good exemplar of what is a nation builder. He's not simply been an outstanding uh, student back in the 1980s, at uh, late 1970s, early 80s, at the University of West Indies, Jamaica, Mona, Jamaica, where he graduated with honors. He, had, he, has not only been, he was not only a good student at uh, John Hopkins University in Baltimore, where in the 1980s he would come down to Washington and meet me and we would go up to Capitol Hill to the Library of Congress. Uh, many, many uh, afternoons uh, going through the stacks and unearthing the history of our island, which had been consigned to oblivion, hmm. the dark moors of oblivion because of the inattention of a colonial society to the narrative of a vanquished people. That's, that's one of the things that I think that what they're doing is really good. Uh, pretty much things that were not said. Because they always say about history and your history and my history versus their history. What is the actual history, brothers and sisters? What is the actual history? And of course, a number of things have been hidden. I think that's one of the things in, in, in reality where we fail to look back at history. I was even having a conversation with Bless in a while ago, brothers and sisters, on the basis of understanding history, especially when it comes down to what was taking place back in the day and the understanding of certain things and understanding the literature and what it means in certain regards and all those kind of things there context being key the words have meanings and different meanings and this kind of things there how do you align it to 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 even understand what is taking place today i think one of the downfalls in humanity brothers and sisters is that we don't remember history and of course if you don't remember history you are doomed to repeat it that is very clear in what is happening in dominica it's just another form of slavery that is taking place. When you look at the, the communist countries and what they did to the people, not saying that all of them was crazy, but certain things that they were doing in that regard to keep their people oppressed, you're pretty much seeing that in a democratic or what is supposed to be a democratic country. So what, that's why history is so important. And this is why I think individuals like um, uh, Dr. Irving Andrea and, of course, uh, Dr. Gabriel, uh, Mr. Gabriel Christian, all these individuals, have a good part to play when it comes down to ensuring that that history does pass on and of course this is why i'm tending to do some of these videos right there so that more, more of the information can pass on anyways let's continue all african descendants all kalinago descendants have been vanquished and to the victor goes the spoils and so the history we were told of was the history of europe britain yep. in particular very little history on dominica and so that's true uh, throughout the period when we were members of the popular independence committee striving to build an independent nation for which we would have uh, all due pride because we uh, believed in each other we respected each other we mm -hmm. loved each other Unity. we loved our country we were dutiful to our country we did not lie cheat or steal we mm -hmm. believed that with a new republic that was uh, resonant in way of integrity in office competent in the execution of the civil service and the police service in foreign affairs we would have our people at what is called the commanding heights. And that is what Rusey really spoke to. Rusey spoke to our pride as a people. She wanted us to have an independent nation, not a nation that was sold out to a plague of passport peddlers oh. who saw nothing worthy of pride in our citizenship so they could treat it as a commodity. I remember I have this message on the prime minister talking about what do he's talking to scary this is actually talking to his supporters saying what do you want do you want a free progressive and independent dominica or do you want a dominica that is that has been turned into a factory for passport selling and only the 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 pass, uh, factory for passport selling to the colon um for the colonizers to only make money and when you look at what he's saying and what is the reality of dominica the prime minister is, is, himself is literally doing the, the the turning dominica into a passport selling nation because you heard the prime minister himself say if not cbi what else previously it was tax on the people 
Ian Douglas making a statement. If not that, what else? In a country that flows with bare sunshine, nice volcanic soil, and water, we're asking, if not CBI or VAT, what else? The very thing the Prime Minister is talking about is that is exactly what he's doing. Turning Dominica into a factory for passport selling. To the point where UK had to ban Dominica from um, entering visa-free. Previously, brothers and sisters, you know Dominica had British passports. All Dominicans back in the day had British passports. And when Dominica sold over itself, well, not sold over, when Dominica got its independence from Britain, you know what happened? That's where the Dominican passports came in. And from that, Dominica had free visa, free travel back and forth to Britain. Today, we have lost it because of one man. And that one man will pretend, oh, it's not his fault. It's never his fault, brothers and sisters. Somebody does, doesn't admit that they're wrong, brothers and sisters. That is a heck of a thing. And they will constantly continue in that perpetuated lifestyle in their mind. Because they will say, boy, it's not me that do that. If these people want to do their own thing and putting it on the people, Peter now has to pay for Paul. And Paul is one man. Peter is plenty people. And we wonder why this case is. Where well, European Union now has to put regulations when it comes down to the citizens selling um, CBI and program. Saying all monies must come to the consolidated fund, must come back to the host country. Must come back. And if that is not the case, brothers and sisters, what do you think is going to happen? Dominica will eventually lose that. It will lose a visa-free travel to, to France and, 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 and to a number of places in the EU. Do you really want this, brothers and sisters? Do you really want that? To be uh, bought and sold on the international market without any accounting to the people who they claim to represent. Yep. So Rusey Douglas represented uh, something that is worthy of emulation in way of his service. He was the son of a wealthy family, maybe one of the most wealthy families in at the time. Move. And when he went to Canada in 1961, Rosie Douglas could have uh, remained with the conservatives who were his benefactors, uh, Prime Minister Dippen Baker, who was a conservative, had invited Rosie to Canada. And he was a leading light, maybe the most prominent black student in the Conservative Party of Canada. Hmm. Rosie Douglas was. But by 1964-65, when he arranged for the visit to Canada of the Dr. Martin Luther King, the Dr. Martin Luther King, Rusey Douglas, hmm. he moved to the side of civil rights and the black consciousness and the whole idea of the countries of the South, those like in, in the Caribbean, Dominica and the others, countries in Africa and the uh, First Nations, that is the indigenous people in Canada being given their Right to self-determination, the pride in your culture, pride in your heritage, and uh, opportunities within the framework of an equality of opportunity society. So in other words, a culture, a culture that is based on the rights given by God, pretty much. Not limited to what you think or what these people were there before. They have their rights to do as they please on a basis given by the Creator. That's 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 my uh, my understanding in this. So Rusey volunteered. He studied at Guelph Agricultural University, went on to McGill, and made common cause with the students at what is now Concordia University, but then Sir George Williams University, and after he had engaged in study effort, he volunteered to lead the civil rights movement. Hmm. For that, he was imprisoned. His daddy wasn't happy about that at all. <laughs> for that, he suffered. For that, he sacrificed. So when we met him as teenagers in Dominica, we were children in our parents' homes. Rusey didn't have any cool out to give to us. Hmm. First thing, Rusey, the only thing Rusey ever gave me of material uh, was a book. kind was the book uh, Common Sense by Thomas Paine, <laughs> one of the pamphleteers and revolutionaries of the American independence movement that led to the breaking away of the 13 colonies from, the, uh, from what is then the United Kingdom. I think a lot of people in schools need to get these books, man. 
A lot of people in schools, common sense. We, <laughs> you need these books, man. He was always focused on education. He always wanted to know we, uh, for instance, were engaged in studied effort. We kept notes. We kept minutes. We learned how to move a motion, how to move a vote of tax. And we have, we, we have, uh, we, 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 we are 13, 14, 15 years old. Do they teach this in schools now? Because I, I didn't learn that in school now. And if I didn't learn that in school, far less for the generation that they today. <laughs> They're trying to teach them how to be, how men should be women and women to be men. And we're discussing issues of our constitution <laughs> and how we would run our... I think, I think that's one of the things that is lacking in schools, brothers and sisters. What is vital that needs to be taught in school is not being taught. What is needed for modern day reality is not being taught. They are teaching us all sorts of things that have nothing to do with reality at all. How to pay taxes, how to do taxes, all, all these kind of things. They're not teaching people this vital information. How to how to 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 to, to put up a, a light put a light bulb, how to how to do a little electrical, you know? Basic things. They're not teaching people none of these things. Oh, help us. Back in the day, it's very clear. That they would have more knowledge than us, than we would, because what what they were taught. Agriculture and how we would do things like geothermal and solar back in the. So they had geothermal understanding back in the day. Nineteen seventies. Not once it ever occurred to us <clears throat> that our nationality would be pulverized <laughs> by the wanton and reckless sale. Of our nationality as in passports <clears throat> throughout that time urban is in canada like with rosie apart from going to school getting married to kathy having a family he dedicated himself to the dominican community in canada and became a leader in that community became a confidant a counselor a supporter whenever there would be a disaster urban would be there there's people who were taught these things at an early age to at least care for their neighbors Today, people focus on social media. Oh, I don't need nobody. I can do this by myself. There has never been anybody in history has done anything for themselves and made it. Nobody. But yet still, that's one of the things that has been pushed. I listened to some of the new, new, um, new um, New Year's resolution on WhatsApp and people saying, oh, they're leaving their baggage behind and people behind fake friends and all those kind of things. They, they have been saying this for donkeys. And sometimes I tend to wonder... Maybe you, you keep saying about you leaving fake friends behind. Apparently, you leave your fake friends behind in 2021. You leave fake, fake friends back in 2022. You leave fake friends back in 2023. You never thought to yourself, maybe you are the issue. You keep leaving fake friends. Maybe you are the fake friend that don't seem to be getting it. And the people who are real seeing you as fake and you consider these people to be fake. When you are the fake one. The understanding of the mind frame, I can do this by myself. There has never been anybody in history, no one at all, who has become successful on their own. Yet still on social media, that's what they're pushing. I can do that by myself. I don't need anybody. Well, continue sooner. Continue. So the effort that Irving has made in literature has been mirrored in his effort in community development. Likewise, we, we have here all our samples. We have our flag by our beloved teacher. Alwyn Bully. Uh, Alwyn Bully. We have the Rest Guava uh, Preserve juice from Bello, the pepper sauce Bello. from Bello. The yeah, Bello. Where do you get Bello? <laughs> Where do you get Bello? What? Marmalade, the beer rum. Hmm. The, 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 That's how long I don't see beer rum bottle. Long, beer rum still exists now, boy. I know there's the beer rum leaves. But the actual br black brown bottle, brothers and sisters, with the little thing that Mac Bay rum, boy, he has it there, he. <laughs> Other pepper sauce, the passion fruit jam, all of those things that we imported into the United States to help preserve, promote our agro industry, a lot of it is now gone. A lot of which Irving will tell you in this book, 
Rusi was dedicated to promoting through organizations like ENDAP, the Northern District Agricultural Processing Cooperative. And so I will close with this. To those of you who will be listening to Irving this evening, to those of you who will buy this book, that's tomorrow. Understand that the culture we need to change is not simply one of a political culture of unethical behavior in office. The culture we need to also abide is where we do things, we do it based on studied effort. We need to study our literature or English. Being informed. Or chemistry or botany or physics or mathematics. And I think that's probably why the debate is lacking because they don't want the people to be informed. If I'm watching two people debating, I can then look at my life and see how my life is going. And based on what these guys are saying, I can then weigh back and forth. Hey, what you're saying doesn't add up. Hey, what that other person saying makes a little sense. What you're saying doesn't add up at all. That's probably why there's no debating when it comes down to elections. Everybody on the podium talking against each other as if you can hear them. If there's a bait, you come to what the person's saying. You can say, hey, you said this, but this is not the case. Did this, this did not happen. You know, something of that sort. But this is not happening. The youth of this the, the generation do have common sense. You ask them what they want to do. They, they... <laughs> oh, boy. It doesn't look like you're getting better, no pal. You're getting worse, buddy. Worse. And I'm not just thinking of Dominica, you know, I'm thinking of the first world countries as well. Well, more in the West. They have been dominating these people so much, they don't even know what is a man <laughs> and what is a woman. One of the greatest questions to ask the Western world in 2021, no, from 2019 to 2020, mid 2023. The greatest question you can ask, what is a woman? And people don't know the, the answer to that, no? Boy. So we can be competent and competitive in this world. Mm. And we've been fortunate to have good teachers to do so. But That's what? another thing too. Having good teachers. Teachers probably checking, boy, is that it have? Let me go and teach, is that it have? If I go and teach, I work any PE or I, I still struggling, go and work in a store or something. Being a teacher is, a, is like a, a boy. Hmm. Once we've engaged studied effort, boy. we must not be greedy and unethical. We must not lie, cheat, and steal from our nation and from our community. It reminds me of a conversation I had earlier on today. When we were speaking about the love of money. The person was telling me, oh, it's the mon money that is the root of all evil. I tell him, no, it is the love of money that is the root of all evil. This is why people get to do a number of things that they should be doing because they love money so much. People selling themselves short because they love money. People love money than they love their own selves. There were some videos that I was watching oh, oh, um, early on, brothers and sisters. There's a girl saying that if she gets $10, not, not 10 uh, um. 50 bucks 50 bucks she was with her boyfriend and they asked her if she would sleep with somebody for 50 bucks she watched her boyfriend she hesitated me hey. she hesitated brothers and sisters indeed we must imagine it don't make people sell themselves for less than that we it top up <laughs> oi a twenty dollar top up, fifteen dollar top up. Volunteer our time to share the benefits of that knowledge with others. That mm. is what Rusey Douglas did. I remember in the night that the courthouse was burnt, I was getting ready for my sixth form college exams in European history. It was mm. a Saturday night. Rosa is in turmoil, the courthouse is in flames, people are milling about in the streets. Action. May 29th, it happened a week or so before, and I said to Rosie, I said, Rosie, the exam is Monday. I don't think I can take that exam. I'm in 6A at the same extramural department of the University of the West Indies where we had six for me those days. We'd stay because we had no building. We would use the convent library. We'd use the grammar school labs. We'd be at Seaford Hall, long, located at the uh, extramural department primarily because we had no facility. Ruzi was driving his Ford F-150 down mm. to Portsmouth. And he said, look, Gable, 
If you don't take the exam on Monday, when are you going to take it? So in this moment of national crisis, where I'm looking to maybe forego an exam because of the national disorder of an uprising, Ruzi was focused on my education. He said, you, you have got to take the exam. I took the exam and I got the best grade in history, maybe six years at the sixth one. Come on, me. As a man focused on education. He was also very kind. And I'll conclude by telling a story that speaks to his empathy, his compassion, his kindness, his lack of interest in the material trappings of power. So Ruzi had come back from Canada in 1976, and Ruzi oversaw the trip, the first trip to, to Cuba by Dominican students for the 11th World Festival of Youth and Students. I remember some people. The delegation's leader was National Youth Council President Pierre Charles. Hmm. I was president of the Federation of Students. There's Debbie Douglas. There's Dr. Steve John at the Bureau of Standards. There's a gentleman, Alexis, from VA Cars. There's a guy, Daru, from uh, La Plaine. There's a gentleman, the Henry family from Maho. So there were different people from all over the island. Interesting. Not just one set. Say, oh, it's Vikas or his post mom for his Ruzu. All over. That, that's good. There's Agnes Esprit. There, she's one of the two females. The other one was Debbie Douglas. So I had a suede boots and it had been, you know, it had opened up a little bit. It was laughing in the front and I didn't have a chance to go to the shoemaker. That day, and Ruzi said, You can't go to Cuba in a pair of shoes like that. He went to his vehicle, he got a, a, a pretty much almost brand new pair of Clark's boots, hmm. very strong boots. He says, Gabe, take these boots. When you get to Cuba and your shoes are fixed, give those to Steve Jones, he can bring them back to me in Portsmouth. But, well, <laughs> shoes can't wait. <laughs> you, I give you a shoes for you to go with. Hey, I wonder. But you, you, were, you were probably his size, man, if he, was, he gave you the same size shoes that he has. Because he still wanted back his shoes. Go Cuba, give it to somebody to bring back for me in Dominica. When you get your shoes fixed, you know. That's interesting <laughs> right there. And when Ruzi came to the United States as Prime Minister in 2000, I took him to get this new pair of shoes and everything else. Almost in memory of his kindness to me. One month later, after March 2000, I met him in May, a couple months later, rather, he had the same shoe. It was not a bad shoe, but he, I didn't see the shoes at bottom. <laughs> I said, Ruzi, where are the shoes? Ruzi said, Gabe, I'm an old cadet. Shoe couldn't take shine. Turns out, mm -hmm. Ruzi had given the shoe away to someone mm -hmm. who didn't have as fine a pair for a wedding. Hmm. Ruzi had zero interest in the material trappings of power. The love of money. The love of money, and I, I remember, if, if I remember correctly, when Scared was younger, saying he wants to, con he want to continue the legacy of Roosevelt or Rusey Douglas, or he's, he's taking it on, the, taking on the mantle to continue. That's what happened is today. Not the same, not the same thing at all, now. Mm -mm. Can we say the same now? Nope, About not at all. Lead our country or mislead our country. Seems like that person is focused on themselves. Whereas Roosevelt wanted to do things for his community. I remember he gave the story of when, Roos, um, when Roosevelt Douglas and him, they went out trying to seek help or some sort. And they, they, they wanted to put them in a hotel. And it's like, how can I be in a hotel? My people are struggling. You get that? But today, a man is taking between sixty dollars to $70,000 a month. While he and his wife is alleged to be bringing $22,000 a month in their salaries. $22,000 a month in their salaries. That is on top the $70,000 they're receiving every month. So in total close to $100,000. $92,000 a month. On the backs of the people who cannot even make that in three years. Some cannot make that in five years. They're making it in one month. Brothers and sisters, you're making $700 a month. Ne need I do the mathematics? Matter of fact, let's go to a thousand. You're making a thousand dollars a month, brothers and sisters. Ay, ay, ay. Twelve thousand dollars, brothers and sisters, to get to ninety-two thousand dollars. You know how much years you have to buy, and that means you're not using the money at all. Man that would give up his shoes, extra shoes that he have in his vehicle, 
so that somebody can make sure they bring it back to him. Now today we have a man in power saying he don't need this and don't need that. A year later, on his third mansion at present, getting $70,000, 60 to $70,000 a month for a rental accommodation. And on top of that salary, being about $22,000, $92,000 a month. Okay? And you think that person cares about you? So I urge all of you to get this book. I urge all of you to give support to the arts. I urge all the students to engage in studied effort, to volunteer in your community. Volunteering means you don't wait for Kula. Volunteering means when you have a hurricane, you help your neighbor. Volunteering means that you help your teachers to keep order in the class and in the schools. Volunteering means that you give to worthy causes. Volunteering means that you help build a beloved, a, 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 a beloved community and that you are a sharing person, that you're a kind person, that you understand to volunteer makes you overall a better person. And so the Dominicans at home and abroad, I ask you this one question. Do you believe that we can have a better society simply because we, we change the government? No. We'll only have a better society, and I believe Gruzi would stand for that proposition, where we take on the attributes that Irvin Andre has exemplified, has made manifest in himself. Somewhere I read, first has become the change that we desire to see. Hmm. And indeed, Judge Andre, through his prodigious effort in arts, as a community leader, as a judge who's stretched himself to volunteer for organizations like the Nature Island Civil, uh, Civil Liberties Foundation, uh, the organizations in Canada, which is, which have been very uh, uh, helpful to Dominic at times of disaster, he's shown in his attributes, his characteristics, the true attributes of leadership. Leadership that's kind, that's wise, that, that's committed. And that's, uh, I, just, I just listened to him speaking and I'm thinking to myself, all these things, we have this in the present leader boy of Dominica. Does Dominica have this in its present leadership? Not just the top, but brothers and sisters throughout the plethora of, 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 of leaders in the different, different respective fields. Whether it's minister of this, minister of that, or pal reps, leaders of society, brothers and sisters. Do we have these things? Think about it. When a pal rep can meet me and come and tell me that Dominica economy is doing well, better than it has ever done before. I mean, come on. A pal rep? We expect to make change. If you're doing better than it was doing before, what is the point of doing anything, brothers and sisters? I don't know. Guys, I'll post this link in the description below so you guys can check it out. But of course, on Friday, Dr. Irving Andre is going to be giving the biography of the black revolutionary known other than Mr. Roosevelt Douglas. And of course, guys, if you want more information on that, let me know that in the comment box below. And of course, get yourself a book right there. Anyways, guys, your boy Mr. Licks on this here, BRBPT. Remember, guys, be real. I should be dropping another one later on, guys, but I'm still not sure. Um, I mean, I have some stuff I can put out and stuff, but we'll see how that goes, brothers and sisters. Anyways, your boy Mr. Licks on this here, BRBPT. Remember, guys, be real. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Hit that like button, brothers and sisters. I would appreciate that. And, of course, your boy Mr. Licks once again on this here, BRBPT. Remember, guys, be real. Be positive.